All right, uh, students. Last uh, in the last video, uh, we stopped at the uh, type of estimator, right? We I think we discussed about uh, different types of estimator, and also we already go through with the very first part, uh, the point estimator. So point estimator means that uh, we want to use a certain formula, right, to estimate the population mean or to estimate the population variance. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, correct. To estimate the both population mean and also the population variance. And then because we are applying a formula, so the final answer that we get is a number. That's why we call it as a point estimator. Alright, so this is where we stop in the previous video. Okay, so for today's video, we are going to continue with the other type of estimator and we call it as interval estimator. So interval estimator is um, you will get a range okay, of a certain, a range of values, that means you will have two values, and we use that two values to estimate the population mean and also the population variance. All right, so we are going to look into the details about the in, uh, interval estimator. All right, so just to recall back, uh, for, last, uh, for the last video, when we discussed the point estimator, we have a few formulas here. So first is the estimation formula for population mean. So you will see that to estimate the population mean, the formula is still the same like what we have learned before, which is summation x divided by n. And then after that, we are also uh, want to find out the unbiased estimates of variance. So for unbiased estimates of variance huh, for the population, there are three different formulas that you can apply here. Right, and then which formula to be applied, it depends on what kind of data that they give you in the question itself. All right, so in general, there are four formulas here. Lah. First one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one, okay, in the uh, point estimator part. All right, okay, then if we go further, for today, we are going to cover the uh, interval estimator. So the interval estimator that we are going to learn is confidence interval. So this is the keyword. All right, so the confidence interval will be the interval, uh, the interval estimator that we want to find out. And we call it as confidence interval. So in our syllabus, we are having two types of confidence interval. The first one is for mean, the population mean. Another one is for P, the population proportion. So the population proportion we'll cover it later. Okay, so for now we use the, uh, we will go through with the concept and idea of confidence interval for mean first. All right. Okay, so what is the learning outcome here? So the learning outcome is you need to determine a confidence interval. Okay, sorry. You need to determine the confidence interval for population mean according to the confidence level that they request. Okay, so give me for a while, yeah. Yeah, so they want you to determine the confidence interval for a population mean. Okay, so in our syllabus, we want to get the confidence interval for population mean. All right, and then uh, and when the population is normally distributed, and then you have the known variance, or maybe you have the large sample. All right, so all the details we'll go through it later, like, but generally this is the outcome, the learning outcome. You need to know how to find the confidence interval. All right? Okay, then let us start with the introduction part and some a basic idea. Okay, so another way of using sample value to give a good idea of unknown population parameter is construct an interval and we call it as confidence interval. And then uh, in general, uh, we can write as CI. Like, CI means confidence in the, the short form, if you, you feel lazy to write out long. Okay, all right. So actually the confidence interval, huh, it, uh, the meaning is they will want to um, find out the interval with a specific probability that include the parameter. Okay, and then all the probability here, they will give you what kind of probability that one they will give you in the question. Okay, and then usually uh, the probability here will be quite high, which is like something like 90%, 95%, 100%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%
or 99 percent okay so in our syllabus mostly that they will ask for 90 95 99 can be also 97 usually it's quite high one the value close to 100 all right uh, in some other cases they also ask before like 80 percent I also have a but in general the the probability that they give you in this question here they were usually quite high one close to 100 and we call all the percentage here as confident level so please make sure that you remember this word and it's very important you are going to see it very very often later okay so all the confidence interval what is the mean of confidence interval means that the percentage of the confidence interval that they want you to calculate okay so every confidence interval okay so usually for confidence interval we write as a bracket la, bracket a and b so a you need to calculate the value for a b you also need to calculate the value for b okay all right and then what kind of uh, what's the value for a and b you need to calculate right and all the calculation based on the confidence level that they give you all right so this is something new la. so you have to remember Okay, confidence interval, all the values also depends on the confidence level that they request in the question. Okay, right. So this is an important word. Huh? Please make sure that you remember this. Okay, then now, what is the meaning? What is the meaning for the confidence interval for population mean? Actually, the confidence uh, interval for population mean, huh? if you look at it, huh, that means of, you have the value A and you have the value B. So if you calculate the probability for population mean between the A and B, the percentage is 95%. Okay, so the mu here is population mean, right? Okay, and the value of A and B are the confidence interval value that you calculate so the a and b here we call it as confident limits okay or maybe some of the book will tell you that the interval limits are all right so the a and b are the confidence limits that we count we calculate by ourselves but when they ask you to find a confidence interval, the meaning is the population mean between A and B, the probability is equal to the confidence level that they give you. Okay? Or another word is the probability that the, con the interval includes population mean is 95%. Okay, so I want you also highlight this one. And usually uh, in the question, uh, they might ask you to explain what is the meaning of the confidence interval for 95%. So you have to write this sentence. The probability that the interval includes population mean is 95% or 0.95. All right, so I understand that to you, it might be a bit abstract uh, because it is something like a, hey, uh, what's the meaning of all this confidence in the band and so on? So again, it is actually by theory, something by theory that you cannot prove by formula. Uh, in short, just take some example, basic one, to let you understand. Okay, so I'll explain what mentioned here. Okay, huh? all right, so now you have a look for this part. Okay, I need to show you the whole graph here. All right, so let's say this is your population mean and you don't know the value, okay? Don't know the value. Do not know value yet. We don't know what is this value population mean, okay? But from the population, I take out one, a few values are a small group of data and then I form a sample. Then I use the sample to calculate a 95% confidence interval. So maybe the first sample, when you take it out and you calculate the confidence interval, then the value is here from this one until this one. So this is your first confidence interval for 95%. Okay, 
and then you will see that because of the mu is this value mass, so the mu is actually between or maybe it's in the confidence interval that you calculate by using the first sample. All right, then now, after that, from the same population again, I take out another sample. So when you take out another sample, it's another smaller data, another group of smaller data, right? Another smaller group of data. So you use the smaller group of data to calculate the confidence interval for 95% again. So you get another uh, confidence interval for the second sample. So assume that this is the second confidence interval. All right, the sample that you make, uh, that you, you build, is from the same population. But because the sample is smaller group, uh, right? So the data that you get might not be different, uh, might not be the same as the first sample just now, the red color one. So that's why the calculation uh, for confidence interval will be different between the first and the second sample, you see? So for the second sample, the smaller value is lower, the highest value is high, it's like, uh, still lower than the first one. And then if you look at it, uh, you will see that eh, the mean is still within the uh, second sample, right? Okay, then you repeat the process again. So maybe now, from the same population, you take out another smaller group of data and you form the third sample. So you use the value from the third sample and calculate 95% confidence interval again. So for this confidence interval, assume that this is the third one, the third confidence interval here. Then you double check and see, okay, the mean is still between. All right, still between the interval that you calculate. So you repeat this process again and again until you have 100 confidence interval here. So you're having one Okay, so if you calculate 100 confidence interval, huh, you will realize that not every time the population mean is between the confidence interval that you calculate. As an example, you see this one. They put it in bold color, right? Okay, like this. Okay, sorry, I don't know what happened to my pen. Something wrong. Okay, so let's say if you see this one, this bold color one, you can see it or not. Okay, nah. okay this one, the bold color one. This one also the bold color one, right? Okay, so all the bold color one, you see that they are also the confidence interval that you calculate, okay, by using the different sample from the same population. But all of these are some exceptional, exceptional case. Like that means all the population mean is not in the confidence interval. All right, and then in short, now, because you repeat this process for um, 100 times, so you calculate 100 confidence interval, now, right? Okay, so that means uh, there are some certain percentage that the confidence interval does not include the population mean. So, because just now you calculate 195% confidence interval. So, in short, uh, it means that uh, around 95% of the confidence interval contains the mu okay and then around five percent of the confidence interval that you calculate does not contain the mu okay so that's the meaning of the confidence interval it doesn't mean that the population mean is com uh, is is confirmed within that interval that you calculate all right, just that uh, by the probability of 95%, uh, okay, 95% of the confidence interval that you calculate uh, will have the mu in those values. All right, okay, so the, the idea and the process actually is a bit abstract to some of the students. Okay, so in short, usually I will tell students, uh, if let's say you don't really understand the whole process, right, it doesn't matter. What you need to do is like, you need to know how to calculate the value correctly only. 
Okay, because in our syllabus, what they want is to ask you to calculate the confidence interval. That's the important point. But in my opinion, the concept is quite important also if you can roughly understand what is the meaning for a confidence interval. Okay, all right. So you can have a look for the details here again to try and understand. All right. Okay, so as what I told you just now, in our syllabus, they want us to calculate the confidence interval, right? And the value for A and B, confidence interval, they will write it in a bracket form, usually A and B. Or they can write it like this. The mu is between A and B. So the A and B here, you need to calculate it yourself, all right? And we call them as confidence limit, confidence limits, A and B. Okay, so what is the formula? So the formula for confidence limit is x sample a uh, sample mean plus minus z sigma divided by square root n. Right, so this is actually the formula for confidence interval already. La. Or you can write it like this. So which means this formula minus 1 is the a plus z1 is the b. Okay, and then Sigma here, sigma here means the population variance. N here means sample size. Z here means the Z value. So Z value will be different according to the different confidence level. Okay, so um, if you want to do the calculation part for confidence interval, it is actually very simple. You just need to apply formula only. Okay? All right? So this is the formula that we have. Lah. Okay? If I'm not mistaken, uh, in the formula booklet, they will give you the formula like this. This one. Okay? So you need to know how to apply it. Uh. So how to apply in detail, how to put in the value correctly, I will explain it in the next video. So this video purely is for the introduction part only, for the confidence interval. All right, and then I will want you to take some time to read the box here, the, in, the content here. What is the meaning of a 95% confidence interval? Okay, so for a 95% confidence interval means that we want to calculate the limit or the, uh, the, the limits uh, with 95% in the center. Okay, so 95% means that you are having 95% in the center. Can see that? And then because of the whole graph is 100%, uh, right? So if let's say 95% in the center, so the rest of the graph co consists of 5% in total. So you divide it into 2, so it will become 2.5% and 2.5% at each side. So total up all the percentage here will be 100%. But for 95% confidence interval means that in the center, we want to have 95%. Right? So I want you to remember this concept here because it will be very important for us to calculate our confidence interval later. Okay? Right? <clears throat> so you just go through with it. Try to understand. If you cannot understand, also never mind. Then in the next video, I'm going to start on the calculation part for confidence interval. So I will stop here for this video for now.